but but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria and up to the ends of the world. Now, verse 9, interesting. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They looked intently up into the sky as he was going up and then suddenly two men dressed in white stood before him, angels, right? Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stare looking into the sky? This same Jesus, which is taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you see him go. So as you can see here, uh, Ascension Day happens on the 40th day, all right? Now, Pentecost Day happened 10 days later, all right? 10 days later, okay? Uh, so when the... So they, they, they waited for 10 days. Now, a lot of things happened during 10 days, unfortunately. Uh, the, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, wrote in verse 3 and 4. Uh, let, let me read this uh, to you because it is kind of uh, important. He said, the Lord appeared to Peter. If, if you like it, you can uh, write down the scripture. He appeared to Peter and then he appeared to the 12 and then he appeared to about 500 eyewitnesses of the resurrection. All right, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, 4, 5, Paul said he appeared to Peter, then he appeared to the 12, then he appeared to 500 eyewitnesses. Now, it's very unfortunate. Uh, out of these 500, by the time we reach Acts chapter 1 here, uh, we read there in in in. In Acts chapter 1, we read there's only 120 left. So from 500 to 120, that, that is about 75% not present. Only 25%, 120 present. To be exact, 76%. All right, if you uh, do your deduction, you'll find that uh, out of the 500 eyewitnesses, uh, only 120 became witnesses. Now, there is a difference. Huh? Eyewitnesses is those who saw the resurrection. Witnesses are those who, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will be my witnesses. And so only 120 move from eyewitnesses to witnesses the, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And so uh, uh, that's why 50 days after the resurrection is what we call Pentecost Sunday, which uh, we will be celebrating uh, this coming Sunday. And so let me go and share screen, all right? Let me go and share. A any question here before I go to the PowerPoint? Anyone here on Ascension Day, Easter Day, or we call Resurrection Day, or Pentecost Sunday, which is coming soon this Sunday. Any question on all this Christian calendar? Anybody? You'd like to ask any question on this Christian calendar? Good. I'm taking time, waiting for you. If not, then we will move to the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Since there is no one, we will go. And share screen. I hope you can see. Can you see? Can someone reply? Can, can, can. Let me give you an introduction, all right? Uh, the Apostle Paul said, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And then mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. All right? So, and then number three, Ephesians be filled with the Spirit. Then Paul said, pray in the Spirit. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, don't put out the Spirit's fire. Now, I purposely put this five scripture in as an introduction to introduce us to what it means to walk in step with the Spirit. That means we are supposed to walk in step. The Spirit leads us. He leads us. Jesus himself said when he come, he will lead us, he will teach us, he will guide us. 
And then in Ephesians 4, he said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. How does one grieve the Holy Spirit? We will talk about it when we, we, uh, we put his voice, inner voice down. We don't obey his inner voice. We don't give heed to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. All right. And then Ephesians said, you know, be filled with the Spirit. All right. In other words, there must be a constant feeling. Many of us received the Holy Spirit maybe 10, 20, even 30 years ago. But after that, you need to be filled. All right. You need to be filled. And then Ephesians 6 say, pray in the Spirit. When was the last time you pray in the Spirit? And then in Thessalonians say, don't put out the Spirit's fire. All right. Some of us here, the fire of the Holy Spirit probably have been quenched and is now in an ember very, very slowly. And so these are five instructions given to us on the Holy Spirit. Think about it for a while. And then let me introduce you to today's topic. All right. Holy Spirit's activity is quite apparent in the Old Testament, even though we are introduced here in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, he, he came in a very powerful way. But let me introduce to you oh, what, what, how he was functioning and operating. All right. In creation, let me read to you. All right. Let me, I prepared the scripture. Uh, in creation, you say the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. Now in verse two, in the beginning, right, the world was without form and void and, uh, and, and the spirit of the Lord. That's what the scripture, if you have your Bible, you can keep it open. You find right from the creation itself, the Holy Spirit is at work. Uh, to correct the misconception uh, of some people, some people think Jesus began during Christmas. Some people, some Christian think the Holy Spirit only came on the day of Pentecost. Uh, I, I like to correct that. Uh, the Holy Spirit was very much in the planet from the Old Testament. From the day one, God created, all right, he was really active. It's just that over the different eras and the different seasons in our life, he came in different form. That's why I will introduce uh, the Holy Spirit to you tonight. And then in the book of Revelation, you know, uh, what are his activity in review? It says here, let me read to you Isaiah 61, which is the theme of our church. All right. When Jesus read in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, it says here, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is now upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to open prison door. He has, you know, he has. And if you read on further in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, he has sent me to heal those who are wounded, set captives free, and open blind eyes, all right, and, and uh, uh, to declare the year of favor of the Lord. So it's, it, it says here, the Spirit has anointed in, in that revelation, all right, in Isaiah 61, okay? And then you also know... Uh, as I've said earlier, the Holy Spirit didn't begin on the day of Pentecost. In the Old Testament, he was very much active in the life of the, the, the believers there. All right, Even though they were not like believers of our time, uh, you, you find that uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord came all right, upon uh, 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 the leadership all right? in Judges chapter 6. If you can see here, it came upon Gideon. And then he blew a trumpet to summon an army. In Judges 15, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And Samson began to tear all those fetters that was used to bind him. And so in, in, in Exodus, yeah, the spirit of the Lord was upon them. They, they were the one that created the, the instruments of the tabernacle. And so you find the spirit of the Lord was very much active in the Old Testament. And then invert renewal, all right? Even in the days of David, this was a psalm he wrote 51 after his problem with Bathsheba. And it says, Lord, do not cast me away from your Holy Spirit in 51 verse 11. All right, create in me a new heart. Do not cast me away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. 
And so you find that even uh, David knew uh, the role of the Holy Spirit then in his life. So these are all in the Old Testament. Okay. And then future outpouring, which is the Pentecost verse in Joel or Joel, if you like to pronounce it, too. In the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And young men shall see vision, old men shall dream dream, your young maidens will prophesy. And this is uh, mentioned, all right, in uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And then, who is the Holy Spirit? Okay. Let's look into a few scripture, and then some of you may have some question here. His personality, all right, is very clear, okay? is very clear in the New Testament. Jesus said, another counselor, all right? John chapter 14, all right? The Spirit he will come, and when he come, he will speak. Now, I put scriptures all there uh, for you to... Uh, to to uh, maybe, if you like, you can use your phone to take a snapshot, but this will be, in, in all these instances, the Holy Spirit play an active role in speaking. In Acts 8, verse 29, the Spirit told Philip, you go near the chariot. In Acts 10, the Spirit told Cornelius, and then later Peter. In Acts 11, the Spirit told uh, uh, different ones. In Acts chapter 13, the Spirit told the early church set apart. Paul and Barnabas for the work I have set aside for them. So in all these instances, the Holy Spirit spoke to individual or the Holy Spirit can also speak to the church, all right, as in the case of the Antioch church in Acts chapter 13. Question. When was the last time you felt the Holy Spirit spoke to you? All right. Hold your thought there for a while. Number two, the Holy Spirit teaches. Uh, Jesus himself said, all right, not anybody else. He said, I will send you the comforter in John chapter 14. When he comes, he will teach you all things, all things. All right, all things, not just spiritual things, but all things. Maybe when we, we, we lack, you know, how to speak, the Holy Spirit can empower us to speak all things, all right? So what is all things? All things means all things, lie. whether it's your personal life, your business life, whatever. He teaches you wisdom, and if you can just refer to it in John chapter 14, verse 26, he teaches. Number three, weaknesses. He will bear witness. He will testify. Now, these are words of Jesus, okay? This is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will testify of me. He will bear witness of me, okay? Number four, he searches. Now, the Apostle Paul said, the Holy Spirit, all right? The Holy Spirit searches all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, even the deep things of God. All right, everything is revealed by the Spirit. Now, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Holy Spirit search, searches all things. So when we pray, we ask the Holy Spirit to search our heart. When we pray, we ask the Holy Spirit to search our mind because the spiritual man, when he understands and they are spiritually discerned, there are a lot of scams out there, and many times we fall victims to scam because we don't discern. Are they scammers or are they fraud? Are they people that were, uh, were uh, yeah, I mean, just out there to cheat? Searches all things. Okay, let me go on. All right. Okay. Intercedes. Paul introduced another aspect of the Holy Spirit. He intercedes, and this is important. He said this, we sometimes don't know how to pray, all right, as we ought to, okay? And then in Romans chapter 26, it said, but the Spirit intercedes for all of us with groanings and words they cannot express. I, 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 I think next week I will put all the scripture up, 
uh, for you. Uh, intercedes. That means the Spirit of God intercedes for us. So sometimes when we are asked to pray, we just don't know how to pray. It's good to speak in tongues and just uh, ask the Lord to lead us, uh, not just simply pray out, you know. Uh, intercede for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. Number seven, Holy Spirit is light too. And, 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 you know, it's a person. You can only lie to a person. And in this case was Ananias and Sapphira in the beginning days of the Pentecost where the good move of the Holy Spirit, Barnabas was the one that started the trend. He, in Acts chapter 4, the last verses, he said he was from Cyprus. He sold the land and, you know, because the early church had great need, he gave the money to and put it at the apostles' feet. But he did it with good intention and soon it became a trend and uh, Ananias and Sapphira also wanted to follow. They sold two, but they kept some behind. And then they lied to the Holy Spirit. We read that. It's a family, familiar thing. Then, of course, we have just read earlier in our introduction, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. You can only grieve a living person. You can only leave. You can only, you can only grieve someone. Uh, how can the Holy Spirit be grief? If you read Ephesians chapter 4, by our lifestyle, when we, you know, embrace hatred, anger, is grief. When we walk, all right, in carnality, it says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. All right, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Number nine, he can be also insulted. If you read uh, Hebrews chapter 10, he said, talking about those who have uh, uh, seen the light and then turn their back, uh, they have insulted the Holy Spirit by doing things that are contrarily. It's a very powerful verse, all this. And then number 10, he's referred to as he. Jesus said, when he comes, he, all right, he's a person, not eat, all right, eat, okay? And then number 11, quick, quickly, his divinity, all right? Just now, someone asked me, what's the difference between the Holy Spirit and angel, all right? Holy Spirit is divine. You lie to the Spirit is lying to God. Acts chapter 5, we just read that just now. All right, he's divine. He's linked to the Father and Son in the benediction. All right, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, when Paul was ready to sign up, and it, it's kind of very interesting. He said this, all right, when, when uh, he was uh, about to uh, sign up, uh, Paul said, the grace of our Lord. Now, it's a very interesting thing here. Grace of our Lord. And then he said, the love of God. And then he said, fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, some of us will probably pro thought that there may be some error there because the Holy Spirit is associated with power. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will be endured with power. But for whatever reason, inspired by God, all right, Paul wrote the benediction in a way, grace of our Lord, love of God, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, may the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you. Because we, we see the Holy Spirit as power. But fellowship is more important than power because when you are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you have the power. You are connected to the source. When you are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He speaks, He guides, He leads. When you are in fellowship in the Holy Spirit, we are spiritually discerned. So in the benediction, you find that uh, uh, this is very powerful. And then in the baptism, the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. He is mentioned three in one. And, and maybe can I take one step further? At Jesus' baptism, and this is recorded in Matthew chapter 3, Right when Jesus went to John the Baptist to be baptized, at the moment he came out of the water, Matthew chapter 3, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him like a dove. Right, number one, 
who? Upon Jesus, the Son. And then heaven cannot hold, hold back. And the Father said, broke out to heaven and said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. So you can see here again, he's linked to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, different role. Okay? He is also called the seventh spirit in the book of Revelation. Okay, uh, you can see once you cross over to the book of Revelation, you can see all that. So his divinity is linked to all this scripture. Now, let me let me go on before I take a break. He's called the spirit of the living God. All right, this scripture is there for you. Spirit of the living God. The sovereignty is ascribed to him. We really read. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he gives gifts as he determines, as he decides, he is sovereign. Okay, he has divine attributes such as omnipresent. You can find in the scripture, God is everywhere. He can be present everywhere. Satan can only be in one location at one time. He doesn't have the omnipresent. Okay, so... Omniscient, he's all-knowing. The Spirit of God searches all things, all-knowing. And then omnipotent, he is all-powerful. All right, he is all-powerful. Now, these are divine attributes of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me handle this and then I'll take some question. all right? I'm not finished yet, but what does the Holy Spirit do in our life? His work is often represented by symbols. This Sunday, I'll be talking about one, the fire. Okay, fire. John the Baptist said when, you know, I baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me will baptize you with fire. All right. And then in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, tongues of fire rested upon each and every one of them. First Thessalonians 5.19, we already read, do not quench the Spirit's fire. So fire is supposed to warm, energize, purify, illuminate, consume, and spread. Okay, fire. Uh, this coming Sunday, my sermon will be entitled, Give me oil in my lamp. All right, give me oil in my lamp. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's an encouragement for us to have oil that will sustain the fire. Uh, I, I do sense that some of us are struggling uh, because our oil supply is down. Uh, I'm taking it from the parable of the five wise virgin and the foolish virgin, even though it's referring to the coming of the Lord. Uh, but the parable teaches us that if you don't have oil, the fire will not burn. Number two, wind like a sound of a gushing wind. And Jesus said, the, uh, John said, the wind blow any way he wants and empowers, refresh, depend, independent, vis, invisible, and then oil, which I'll be talking about this Sunday. Oil consecrates comfort and heal. Number four, water. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, cleansing, reviving, satisfying, fertilizing, freeness and abundance. What does the Holy Spirit do? Okay, let me go on another few more slides and then I will take some questions before I move on. In the New Testament, generally the Holy Spirit is active in definitive revelation of Christ to and through the New Testament writers. The illumination of the human heart. You find that uh, the, all those who write, write under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. All scriptures are inspired, all right, by the Holy Spirit, all right? That's why we believe the Word of God. The scripture is the Word of God because man didn't write it. It was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, not even one iota of my word shall pass away unless it is fulfilled. The illumination of human heart to receive this revelation, the new birth, the Holy Spirit is present. All right, we cannot uh, 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 call, uh, we cannot be a Christian unless the Spirit of God within us give us the ability to call Abba, Father, all right, to become the body. And then weaknesses to the fact that we are Christ. He bear weakness to us, given a spirit of adoption, right, 
you don't need anyone to tell you or convince you whether you are the sons of God or daughters of God. You're right. You have this inner weakness in you. And then the sanctifying transformation. The Holy Spirit is not just there. Yeah, he sanctifies us. Right? He's there to do the work of sanctification, set us apart, correct us. The Holy Spirit direct us. The Holy Spirit correct us. The Holy Spirit guide us. And so we will come back to this question later. And then the Holy Spirit also equip the saints for service. We'll talk about the spiritual gifts later. Okay, two more and then I'll stop here. In relation to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is involved in the conception. You all know, right? Gabriel said to Mary, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will conceive. All right? The Holy Spirit is involved. In public ministry, you find Jesus was led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him. All the scripture, all right, will tell you that, you know, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, and he went around doing good. And so all the scripture, the Holy Spirit was very much involved with Jesus' uh, public ministry and life and work as well. Luke chapter 4, verse 1, you can see this. The Spirit of the Lord led him. The Spirit of the Lord led him out. Atoning death. You find that the Holy Spirit was also active in the atonement. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And very much also in the resurrection. All right, The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is also working in each one of us, right? Romans Romans tells us that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, the same power is at work. And so you can see in the apostolic ministry is the same, okay? All right, scripture is also the same. All scripture, Second Peter, verse 1, 22, 21, all scriptures are inspired. And so you find that the, the, the Christian age, 2 Corinthians, uh, how the Holy Spirit is involved in every aspect of the Lord's life. Okay, one more. In relation to the Holy Scripture, I already mentioned in passing, all the books of the Bible owe their origin to Him. All right, all scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wrote, all right, uh, spoke to the apostles, to different prophets as they wrote the scripture. The writers were born along by the Spirit's influence. We already mentioned 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. They wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit alone gave conviction to the truth of Bible's message. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. So regarding the Holy Spirit wrote in the scripture, the Spirit gives light causing it to be recognized as the Word of God, causing His promise to be confirmed experientially. All right, the Word becomes alive. All right, otherwise, you just have a Word, it's not alive. And then causing the truth to change the individual's life for good. The Word of God transforms us. The Word of God changes us. The Word of God cleanses us. The Word of God burns within us. And so the Holy Spirit is active not only in the life of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is also active in the very word we read. And then one more, I'll stop. In relation to the Christian life, all right, in relation to the Christian life, how does it come? He gave us new birth when we believe in Jesus, okay? All right, we will talk about that. The same Spirit, all right, nobody can come to the Lord, unless the Spirit leads him. He brings maturity in Christ's likeness, graces such as love, faith, and hope. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, you know, perseverance, self-control. We bear the fruit. He gives us a role within the body of Christ and equip us for ministry. You find all spiritual gifts, all right, is given all right, the gifts of the Spirit. He enables to understand and believe Scripture with testify to Christ. Okay, these are very important as well. Sometimes when we try to read the Scripture without the help of the Holy Spirit, all you read is just history. 
All right, but when you begin to read with the help and illumination and revelation of the Holy Spirit, you find it helps you. And then he prays for us when we don't know how to pray, just as Jesus prayed for his disciple. All right, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Pray through us. So in relation to the Christian life, he gives life, mortal bodies as in the last day, just as Jesus was raised victorious. And this is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as well. So you can see here, all right, you can see here, uh, uh, all right, I, I think I stop here. I don't want to be sound too wordy. Okay, can I? Are you still there? <laughs> yes. uh, all right, all right, all right. I think I've covered quite a lot of topics here, as you can see. All right, before I go to the second part, uh, any question here? Any question here before I go to the second part? Anything about the Holy Spirit? All right, please ask. Any Yes, Brother Fu. Uh, you are muted. Uh, yeah. I just want to share. Uh, because your daily life, I think I totally obey the Holy Spirit. You know? So anywhere I go, uh, timing is so smooth. You no, know? Good parking, good weather. You see? And they say sometime last year, uh, I was just parking my car. You know, usually I, I, I drive my car very hastily. You know, you see? I park very fast. So I my Front tire hit the pavement, no. So tire got burst, no. So immediately an explosion burst, no. So I change the tire, cost me three hundred dollars. And yet I thank the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, I just change the tire. I'm not hurt, no. Something worse could happen, no. I thank the Holy Spirit, you see. So uh, the other day, only I think a bit ago, uh, when somebody horned me at the back uh, because I, I was driving very slow. So I raised my hand, very really angry, you know. <laughs> So after that, uh, I parked my car, I went, went for my breakfast. Uh. The moment I stopped there, uh, I just walked up the staircase, a big dead red, no, a big one, no. The dead red there, no. So I feel that the Holy Spirit tell me next, next day, uh, you don't show your temper. When people on you, just relax, you see. Uh, so I believe that, no. So now I change, no, you see, people on me, okay, let it go, let it be, you know. So I feel everything is so smooth, no, you see. And then all my sicknesses healed because I trust in the Holy Spirit. No, you see, everything yeah. sometimes instead of going straight, I turn left. No, I say, Oh, Holy Spirit or oh, Jesus or oh, Lord, thank you. Going straight, something may happen to me. You ask me, I turn I turn left. No, so I believe is guided by the Holy Spirit. No, so everything the Holy Spirit comes first. No, yeah. so I see a lot of breakthrough and transforming personally. Like, you see, yeah. my health is improved tremendously. Even for about six years, huh, I didn't check the cardiologist. No. Suppose every three months, no. After six years, no. You see? And then I'm still so well, you no. Know, see? Can carry weight, can drive, not night driving, everything okay, you no. Know? So I believe, I believe the Holy Spirit truly is so true, you no. Know? And then I never doubt anything, you no. Know? Everything I pray, yeah. I, I believe when it comes to God, uh, we mustn't have any doubt, no. 100% believe, no. 100% believe. Because once you have doubt, uh, it mm. won't work already, you see? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> So we cannot be be uh, little warm, no, we must be hot, no, you see. 100%, you see, without saying that. So I just want to share, la, you see. So the working of the Holy Spirit really is so strong, no. So everywhere I go, you see, I have no more fear, you see. Even sometimes people block my way, uh, I just bloody say, like, please don't block people's way, you see, like people cross, why you stop there, you see. I talk gently, like, I have a bonus to speak, no. I'm not worried about road worry or road abuse, no. I dare to stand up, you see. The bonus is from the Holy Spirit, no. But of course, I try not, not to offend people deep in a nice way. Yeah. So truly, yeah, thank, thank the Holy Spirit for my daily walk. La. I yeah. respect it tremendously, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I have the character that what people say, like some people say, ah, like I have after better, better uh, this water baptism, uh, yeah, people say we have to go to the baptism of the Holy Spirit again. Is it true, uh, Pastor? Because uh, I got to water baptism, water baptism, I think it's already sufficient, isn't it? The yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, people say uh, it's not enough. No, you have to go to another uh, uh, no, no, no. Holy Spirit. No, I think not necessarily, isn't it? No, no. Okay, okay. Let, okay. Let, me, let, let me answer your question, okay? Uh, uh, when you talk about water baptism, by the way, which we will be having in July, uh, water baptism mm. is uh, 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 something instructed by the Lord. They say when you believe and be baptized, it's an mm -hmm. outward 
And in fact, the Lord set us an example when when John refused to baptize him. He said, mm. "I'm not even worthy to untie, you know, the the your your uh, you know." The, then 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 Jesus said, "No, do it for righteousness' sake. All right, do it because I want to set the example." So uh, uh, Jesus did it, water baptism, and mm. and we all know that Paul uh, Eli, uh commented on it, and 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 uh, he said it's an outward. Uh, outward is like a watery grave. We identify with the death of our Lord. You know, uh, we we die with Him. We are also raised with Him in the water baptism, like a watery grave. And then water baptism is also signifying that you know we are dying to the old self, arising as new. So water baptism is symbolic in the sense that uh, you know uh, that's that's. That's that's how we we really uh, uh, signify that we are identifying with the Lord. Now, in many culture, in many culture, especially in Asia, even though we we know for one to become a Christian, uh, Romans chapter ten verse nine and ten tells us there is no such thing as sinner's prayer. By the way, huh? we 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 coin the word sinner's prayer. But actually, sinner's prayer came from Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and you will confess with your mouth, all right, Romans chapter 10. Let, let, me, let me read that lah, for the sake of those. Uh, this is very important, so I will read it out. Uh, this is where we get uh, uh, sinner's prayer from. Lah. Uh, uh, okay, this is where we get sinner's prayer from. It says here in... Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Mm -hmm. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then verse 11, say, uh, verse 10 say, it is with your heart you believe, you are justified, and with your mouth you confess, you are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will not be put ashamed. So when, when we believe, let's say we believe what Jesus has done on the cross, we begin to confess it, we believe it, we confess it, then uh, you become a Christian. But then that alone, uh, sometimes have you, have you prayed that kind of a prayer? Can you, you know, we, we, we let people to, to, to the Lord and say, okay, can you pray this after me? And then they say, after they follow you, they say, that's it. I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian now. <laughs> uh, there's nothing I I, 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 I can do. Uh. Like, you see, in other religion, you've got to be circumcised. <laughs> uh, 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 but in Christianity, what will you do? I, I, but I don't feel like a Christian. Eh? So in, in our society and in our culture, our parents don't take us seriously until you are baptized. You know? They don't even mind you going to church, you know. But you talk about suele or, or water baptism, hey, you cannot, 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 cannot. Because water baptism is like you're going all the way a point of no return. To them, uh, it's like, wow, you're going to the point of no return, really. Even our gods cannot accept you back. You know? So I, I'm not saying it is scriptural, but this is how seriously they view water baptism, suele. You know, in the sense that, oh, this is how the final, the final, uh, rights of a Christian. But we all know we are not saved through water baptism. We, we are saved by our confession and our belief in the Lord. Okay. So, but, but you see, when it comes to Holy Spirit baptism, this is in response to Jesus' command. He said, you wait. You wait in Jerusalem. You don't do anything because you say, I'm going back to the Father. I'm no longer physically going to be with you. You wait the Spirit, the Comforter, right? The Paraclip, He will come and take my place. And, and He will not just be with you. He will live with you. That's a difference, you see. So, so the disciples waited. And eventually on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell. And, and they, they experienced it in a very different way. Jesus wasn't there physically, but they knew, they felt it. They felt differently. Uh, they started having the, 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 the bonus. You, you, you see, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, I, I, will, I, I will show you in this coming Sunday. 
the obvious is being Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit stood up. You know, Barnabas, full of the Holy Spirit, is very descriptive, you know. Before they can they can do anything, you know that all their actions came from the Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, uh, Philip was led by the Spirit. And so in the book of Acts, you will see all these descriptive sentences or action. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up. Barnabas was a man full of the Holy Spirit. Philip was, you know, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, stood up and began to refute. And so you find in a book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's a drastic difference. It translated to bonus. You die a martyr in the case of Stephen. All right. In the case of Philip, the Holy Spirit led him. In the case of Barnabas, the Spirit of God used him because he was full of the Holy Spirit to Antioch Church. And, and so when, when we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's, a, a, it's another experience where we are empowered. All right. Of course, we have already confessed. Now, now I, I say this because, I, as I've said earlier, I, I became a Christian in a gospel brethren background. Was I saved? Definitely I was saved. All right. I was a Christian. Yes, I was a Christian. I was a good Christian. In fact, in the first two years of my Christian life, I read the Bible twice, you know, from cover to cover. That's how earnest I was, you know, for, uh, in, in the Lord. Uh, uh, then it was in the third year of my Christian faith, I I I was, I went to Grace Assembly those days in Panamaran, and, and I was exposed to this, this, this Holy Spirit thing because the first two years, the Brethren Church won't talk about it. All right. Even when they come about it, it says, you know, Ellen, this one has already, you know, with the apostle came, you know, no more already. And then, of course, uh, the next portion of my Bible study will be talking about cessation of the gifts. Why some people believe that, you know, no more already. When the perfect comes, we don't know, we don't need. But the perfect is not referring to the scripture. The perfect is not re is referring to when the Lord comes. We are not, we are still not in the age of perfection. And so they, they, they assume that the perfect, when the Bible comes, we don't need all this spiritual gift anymore. We don't need all this Holy Spirit. But looking at our days, we need the more of the Holy Spirit than anything. And so uh, uh, when we talk about that baptism, is a different, distinct experience. Water baptism is to tell the people that you are a believer. All right, I'm dying to self. I'm dying to self. I'm obeying the Lord, water baptism. I'm obeying the Lord. And uh, he said, be baptized. I'm going to be going for the baptism. All right. I'm going to be identifying. He, uh, he died and he rose again. I'm going to identify with him on uh, with a watery grave. But Holy Spirit is a different thing. Holy Spirit is, in Acts chapter 1, you will be endured with power from on high to be my witnesses. Holy Spirit comes, all right? And then in the words of Jesus, when he comes, he will lead, he will teach, he will guide, he will empower you. And we have already gone through everything, you know. He will guide you, he will speak to you, he will testify. And you come this Sunday, I'll be mentioning 30 things that the Holy Spirit is to us, you know, which the Bible, I'm just going to read the scripture to you this coming Sunday. The Holy Spirit, he He, he testify, he empower, he leads. And, and I'm just going to read scripture. And yet, if we are not introduced to him in the correct way, how can, how can, that, that's why some Christians still, unfortunately, still feel very aimless. They, they don't know their future. They go seek fortune teller. They go and see Bomo. Very sad. Very, very sad when Christian resort to all these uh, connections, so to speak, because they want to know what's their future, about their fortune, about their mishap. Very sad when the Holy Spirit is distinctively given to us for all this. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need all this anymore. And, and uh, so in, in answering to your question, Brother Fu, the Holy Spirit baptism is different. And unfortunately, the modern church is not emphasizing enough. Especially in this age, you know, we see the counterfeit more and more. Uh, and yet, 
the Church of God, you know, as I've said earlier, 500 eyewitnesses, only 120 became power weaknesses for the Lord. So if that statistic is true, then only 25% of a church is powerful. The rest of the 75, they are not going to be there on the day of Pentecost because they don't show up. They didn't tarry long enough. They saw the resurrected Lord. They heard the same commandment, wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. But 10 days later, you find only 120 were there. What happened to the 400, uh, uh, 380, you know, that were, were absent, you know, sad. But this is the true picture. Any question on this Holy Spirit thing, you know? Right. Okay, Pastor, then, uh, you see, um, uh, for my daily life, uh, I pray also, say, Holy Spirit, more of you, less of me, you know. So, actually, mm. I fully trust the Holy Spirit, 100%, no, you see. Yeah. So, actually, uh, being a Christian, uh, you see, after that water baptism, uh, I think it should be complete, really. Uh, because yeah, 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 yeah. Christianity uh, is so, so simple and straightforward. We believe God created the world. God sent Jesus to die for us. We must believe 100% without, without doubt, no. So, we believe everything, uh, then our faith will be strengthened, no. And then, of course, in the daily life, we have to obey the uh, God's two commandments. Uh, yeah. To love our God with all our heart, all our mind, also our strength, love our neighbor as a beloved self. This one, I think every Christian must put into practice as a daily life, as a lifestyle. No, mm. Not only that, no, we must have the pride loving lightness also, no, as a lifestyle. No, yeah. it's, not, it's not difficult to be the pride loving lightness. Just love everyone. Uh. Even people yeah. against us, we still love them. Mm. And then, of course, on top of that, we must have the nine foot of the spirit. Mm -hmm. We also must put in the practice of daily life. Well, love, joy, peace, ah, uh, uh, all this patience, self control, goodness, mm -hmm. and all this we put into practice. No, especially yeah. the first two commandments. No, mm -hmm. the love of God with all our heart is yeah. nothing difficult. No, because God provides everything for us. No, mm -hmm. so to love others is nothing difficult. No, you see, love is love. Love is so powerful. No, I believe love uh, is just a protective yeah. shield uh, that protect us. No, okay. so unconditional love is very powerful. No? I firmly Thank believe you. that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. You see, it, it is not difficult yeah. when one bears the fruit. Uh, you see, there's a difference. You see, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, you know, all you 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 know the, the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, patience, yes, yes. suffering, and perseverance, self-control. You, you see, it, it is not difficult to forgive, to love, to have joy when you have the fruit. But but some Christians have difficulty because it, it is not natural. Fruit, fruit, you, you, you don't have to manufacture, you know. You know, you abide in me. Jesus said, I abide in you, you will bear fruit. Mm. It's a natural process. It's very organic. But unfortunately, when Christianity is reduced to ritualistic, uh, like a religion, uh, you, you thou shall, thou shall, and thou shall not, then it is no longer a fruit bearing thing, it's more about observing certain rules and regulations. You don't go to cinema anymore, you don't drink anymore, you don't do this, you don't gamble anymore. So when you begin to lease the lease of regulation, like some religion does, some religion do, then you find it's complying, complying to certain rules and regulations. But when one is leaving under the control and the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, as you say, Brother Fu, it becomes it comes naturally. It's easy to love. It's easy to forgive. It's easy to, to have peace. It's easy not to worry. Why? Because the fruit in you, it will show. It will show. Mm -hmm. But when you try to explain to someone who, who, who has not the fruit, you ask him to forgive and say, he cannot. <laughs> you ask him to enjoy, he cannot. <laughs> you ask him to, you know, to love, he cannot because it's not, it's alien. It, it, it's, it's like, hey, Pastor, you don't tell me, I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, you know, because it's not natural. It's not natural. But when you are walking with the Lord and the Spirit is at work in you, it, it's, it's a natural process. It's a natural process. So that, that, that's why sometimes, uh, why why so difficult? Why, yeah. why so difficult to love? Why so difficult to have joy? And you see, joy and happiness is different. 
we are happy because we have this, we are happy because circumstances is right. But joy, joy in affliction, joy in hardship, it, it is not a natural thing. The joy of the Holy Ghost is not a natural thing. It is in a means of tribulation, affliction, they still can, can rejoice. So it's not depending on circumstances and happening. Why? Because it's a fruit of the Spirit. That's why joy and happiness are two different things. You know, the joy of the Lord shall be their strength. All right. And if you read the book of Acts, they were persecuted, but they were great joy in, uh, in their heart. And so, as I've said earlier, uh, once you experience the Holy Spirit, uh, it, it comes naturally. But but if you don't, is a second is, is is something very alien to you. All right. So thank you, uh, Brother Fu, for sharing. I, I know you are passionate, but we want to give opportunity to others who may want to ask. Any anybody else? And any any question on the Holy Spirit? Uh, here. Uh, uh, Pastor, then Pastor. forgive me, everyone. Uh, give me one more chance. Uh. You see, uh, I believe that uh, Jesus came uh, and died for the cross. Uh, or be already set free, you know, actually, you know. Yeah. So some people, uh, because of uh, legalism and all that, uh, they, they, they have to bondage all their own self, no. You see, we are set free, did you? Why we want to, we want to seek the so many rules and regulations? We are set free as long as we be righteous and holy, caring, loving, and tough, really. Uh. But people yeah. still want to keep themselves bondage, no. If you say you set us free, you know. His precious blood washes your right plan, you know. So from there onward, we obey Jesus, uh, our life is full of blessing. Yeah. Okay, Pastor. Sorry, I think it's too much time. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think Brad Tiru wanted to ask yeah. something or oh, say something. Uh, sir, uh, there, there are some believers. Uh, of course, for us, water baptism is very important uh, because we acknowledge that we are a believer and we do it as an act of obedience. Uh, okay, but uh, this, this uh, believers, you see, baptism in the water is not, not, not important. Uh, he, they always quote the, the, the. The thief on the cross, you know, he was with Jesus in yeah. paradise that very day. Yeah. Uh, any comments on this? Yeah, because whoever they quote the thief is not reading the scripture. <laughs> yeah. uh, because you see, one cannot read the scripture and say, I don't want to be baptized. Yeah. Because the Bible is very clear you believe and be baptized. The early church disciples demonstrated all the way. All right, in in uh, Ephesians, where where Paul met several uh, people, and and they said, you know, oh, there's water. What's what's straight away they baptized them, and so uh, 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 so if you're reading the scripture, you you find it's not only the the thief on the cross, but everywhere they they tell you, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Himself was baptized. The early church. All of them, they they preach the gospel and they baptize people. John baptized people, and so you find that uh, if, if they say it's not important, then they are not reading the scripture, because uh, there are there are so many places throughout the scripture that says you know if you believe, of course, believe is a is a is a personal thing, is a heart thing, but baptism is is an outward expression of the heart. I I just want to obey the Lord. It's no longer if the scripture says, you know, do this, we do it because it's obedient to the Lord. All right. So, uh, uh, does that answer you? Yeah, it answers me. I do. I think they just, I mean, they, they just want to argue with you. Oh, argue. Then we argue, argue <laughs> with them with using the scripture. Yeah. yeah if they yeah. argue philosophy, you just point the scripture and say, what, what does the Bible say? What does the early church say? You have to be baptized because, you know, the, the disciples did it. Jesus did it. The, the early church did it. And, and uh, uh, you know, so what what's stopping us? That means if you are not doing it, you are actually not, not living in obedience to the word. All right. Uh, another thing is, or like Fu mentioned, you know, of course, we, we are led by the spirit. But whoever that is led by the spirit must also be guided by the word of the Lord. All right. Uh, uh, the word is the one that gives light. Uh, uh, the word is the one that gives the reference. Okay, uh, because uh, as I shared earlier, the word of God gives us the reference. Uh, I I will share share with the uh, the rest of a PowerPoint now uh, because uh, many people are very cautious about spiritual gift and all these miracles. 
but but my last slide will safeguard, give you some reference and guideline. That in the midst of all these miracles, there are six or seven things that we have to ask ourselves. All right, six or seven things we have to ask ourselves. And and uh, later, let me take some question here. If there is none, then I will jump into my last few slides on that. Any okay. other comments here? It need not be a question. It can be a comment. Any question? Yes. Uh, go. We have read, uh, we have read that throughout the Bible uh, that a lot of individuals were filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. When you say was filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, does it mean it mean that the Holy Spirit takes over the life of the person? No. Uh, one. No. And so and then uh, because all that we, we always hear being filled with the Holy Spirit. Is there such a thing as being half filled with the Holy Spirit or quarterly filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> uh, no. As I've said earlier, it's a descriptive uh, uh, thing. Fill with the Holy Spirit. Okay, when you say fill, fill with love. Okay, uh, Chego, I know you're an English teacher. Fill with love. How much love? If fill with anger, we use the expression, oh, yo, that man are uh, full of hatred. Uh. Uh, Chegu, how full is full of hatred? Or, or, or that man, or yo, after the death of his, his thing, are uh, filled with grief. Uh. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think we are using it to in a measuring quantum. You know, it's a descriptive thing where, where it, it, it just show, hey, this guy, Peter, you know, he stood up filled with the Holy Spirit and people would see the difference, you know. This guy, the difference is he was filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. Mm -hmm. And 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 for example, when they talk about uh, 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 Barnabas, Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit. How full is full? Huh? <laughs> 70%, 80%, 90%. But I think it, it just an expression uh, of the scripture to indicate that this person had the Holy Spirit in his life, all right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit is at work in his life, all right? At work in his life. And and uh, that, 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 that's why, you know, uh, this coming Sunday, I, I'm going to show you scripture, the, the feel with Holy Spirit, full with Holy Spirit, don't quench the Spirit. And and you know don't don't put out the Holy Spirit's fire, so there there are just descriptive words. Uh, uh, again, can I caution you because when we go along that line, uh, Holy Spirit is a person. You cannot have seventy five percent, fifty percent, thirty percent. Holy Spirit is person. It's God. So you cannot have thirty percent God. Uh, hey, how much you have, huh? uh <laughs> so because when we we think when we think in that full feel uh as what what chegu neo you mentioned uh, we we are like thinking in measuring but but when we 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 see the holy spirit as a person he can be grief he can be insulted he can be lied to he is god uh then then is you don't no longer a question of 30% 50% 100% is is a question of how much you have yielded control to him. It, it's a question of how much have we yielded control to him, and and uh, that's why to some uh, we we quench the spirit. To some we grieve the spirit. You can only grieve a person, all right. Uh, you, you 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 know you can only suppress a person. So that's why the the language is very important. Uh, uh, so it's, it's a relationship. La. It's a relationship. So if you take it, that's why the Apostle Paul in the benediction, grace of our Lord, love of the Father, and he, he could have easily should power of the Holy Spirit be upon you because we associate Holy Spirit with power. Yeah. But then he, he under the inspiration of Holy Spirit, he said, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Uh, what a powerful revelation because when we are walking in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, uh, I think we will have power. La. We have love. We will have all this that comes along in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, made a communion. You know, uh, later we will talk about it. Made a communion and a fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. Any other question here? I hope I've answered that. Anyone? Any comment on the Holy Spirit? Any question? Uh, sir, uh, yes. Matthew chapter 3, yeah? mm. and Jesus was baptized. Before he started ministry, he said to John the Baptist to baptize him. And upon baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon him. He said, empowered to went to the desert. Uh, right now, most of the people, uh, churches I see, when people are surprised, it takes a very long time for them, for the for the individual to be baptized. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Holy Spirit. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah. and that take, lead them to the spirit of baptism. Because Holy Spirit baptism, somebody must lead the person, yeah. teach them, uh, yeah. guide them to be baptized. Yeah. So yeah. unless we, like you said, the song, the crux of the matter is, if you go tell your, in the Chinese culture, you tell your parents, you are going water baptism, it becomes a big issue. Becoming Christian is not an issue. So you, you see the importance of water baptism as yeah. in John chapter 3, a Matthew yeah. chapter 3. So, yeah. but I see a lot of, uh, because I hang around the Nepali church, then they accept the person, accept Christ, but then they are not baptized for a long, long time. And sometimes they fall away yeah. because these are Hindu background people. Yeah. So, for them, like you said, they want to see some people, something tangible. Oh, yeah. I am baptized. I, I, I have been uh, physically something is being done. So yeah. they know they have been transformed from yeah. Hindu to Christian. Yeah. So for, for me, I feel that it is important that mm. we do water baptism and lead them to Holy Spirit yeah. baptism. And then they are they, uh, if, uh, empowered to walk yeah. the Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, rightly put, uh, Sega. It's true. The the problem of the modern church is because of time. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't instruct the people immediately, especially those who come from uh, other backgrounds, like they mentioned. They are steep in religious background. Uh, confessing and recognizing the Lord as Lord and Savior is not good enough. They, they come from a background where, okay, I, I'm ready to receive Christ. I'm ready to confess him. Uh, but when we follow through water baptism, then they're taken as seriously. It's no longer like, hey, I've gone through a, a, a baptism, so to speak. So I'm serious with my faith. This is how the world will view us. Do you know that even in the eyes of the authority, uh, uh, water baptism certificate, is 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 a, a, a proof of your conversion. Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, they, those of us who want to go Israel, if you want to go home ministry, Kementerian uh, Dalam Negeri for your pilgrimage, you need to produce a water baptism mm -hmm. to indicate that you're a Christian. That's what they want. And when when many many years ago, when I was in Kota Baru, there was a senior uh, a registration officer attends our church. And, and I asked him, hey, uh, can you add the word Ellen to my IC? I said, can. Just bring a water baptism. You know, so that's all the government officers will need. You give me a water baptism. And then today, of course, now Ellen is in my IC. Ellen is in my passport, in all my official documents. Why? Because water baptism is recognized by the authority that you have converted. Mm. You have converted. You are serious with your faith. So in the eyes of our relatives, our family, you, you are not a serious Christian if you have not taken water baptism. I, I'm not saying it's scriptural. I'm saying to some extent, I think we need to follow through. Uh, and, and can I also say this? Uh, the Church of Christ, uh, there's one in Tolopolai, they don't consider us uh, serious believers because the Church of Christ believe uh, if you, you say if you get into argument with the church of christ they say repent and be baptized straight away it is not a, a delay thing that's why the church of christ don't recognize us as believers they are like almost a cultish they look at other christian and nah you all didn't follow through the word of god the word of god say you believe and be baptized in in acts and because you say you believe but you're not baptized so it's not serious so this is how the church of christ 
uh, sect will look at all other Christian church and say, ours is not 100%. Because we believe, but we don't follow through the baptism. So the Church of Christ will say, if you believe straight away, you must be baptized to be considered a serious, I mean, to be a member of their church. So, uh, uh, yes, I agree. But, but, but because the modern church, we want to have extra classes. Uh, uh, we want to firm them make them understand uh, what they are doing. Uh, because sometimes uh, people are moved by emotion. They see their friends becoming Christian. They also want to become Christian. Or, or they, they sign up for baptism. I also want to be baptized. But they are not properly instructed on the question of their faith. So that's why we say, okay, if you want to be baptized, go through a class, understand what you are doing. You know, understand what you are doing. And, and in the eyes of the government, by the way, uh, we cannot baptize anyone below 18. Uh, it is considered illegal. And so, again, you know, baptism in the eyes of authority, in the eyes of uh, the culture that we are living in, is taken as seriously a conversion. All right. So it's true. And, 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 and particularly from the background they come from. Oh, you're going to church? Ah? Oh, the next question, you baptize already? Ah? Ah, not yet. Oh, okay, lah. that means you just go and look-see, look-see. Lah. <laughs> you're not serious yet. But when you say, I'm baptized already, oh, you're not any, any serious. Eh? Wow, really? Ah? you reach a point of no return. All right. And so, uh, yes, uh, Sega, there is a place uh, to follow through. All right, quickly follow through and also follow through with the uh, the matter of uh, baptism of Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't see that in the modern church. Lah. We are quite cautious. You know, we don't, they believe already. They say, okay, next thing you need to be baptized and next thing you need to be, you know, let me pray for you. You need to be, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. We're speaking in tongues and, and we, 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 we thought of frightening them. Huh? So we say, okay, you go slow, go slow. Uh, but uh, in, in doing so, we deprive them. Lah. Seriously, in doing so, we deprive them. If it is so important, uh, what are we holding them back for? If the Holy Spirit is empowering you, if the Holy Spirit is so special in your life, why are you not sharing with people? You know what I mean? When when we go to a nice place to eat, uh, wow, I must bring somebody, I must go and bring them the next time. Or when you have some good things that works in your life, you want to share. So if the Holy Spirit is really making a big difference in your life, you you wouldn't want to keep quiet. Lah, because you know the Holy Spirit is empowering. The Holy Spirit can do a lot of things. And, and I suspect because many people run into error, they have not seen the Holy Spirit as a teacher, as the one who is spiritually discerned. You know, the Holy Spirit is spiritually discerned. He who is spiritual is spiritually discerned. We won't fall for things. There are Christians who fall into one thing after another, you know, scam, la, wrong investment, la, believe in this, believe in that. If only the Holy Spirit is being asked, you know, he says, you know, Holy Spirit, should I go ahead or should I not? All right. And, and uh, 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 you know, I, I suspect they don't see the Holy Spirit in that role. You see, they see the Holy Spirit as just an mm, optional thing, you know. It's okay la, if I have him, okay la, if I don't have, also okay. La. But it's not possible to live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. As I said earlier, let, let, let me finish this. Okay, let me allow one more question and then I show you the remaining slide. Do we have time? 9.30. Okay, any, any, any one or two more questions, anyone? Uh, Pastor Andrew here. Yes, yeah, Andrew. Uh, going back to the earlier question, uh, my brother asked whether Holy Spirit is uh, half with us or 30% with us or 100% with us. And you explained that uh, Holy Spirit is a person and it's a relationship with a person. Uh, that's, that's, that's very accurate because uh, as Paul explained in uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 16 to 19, he explained that uh, we have the Holy Spirit in, in us as the blood of Christ. And it's a relationship. It's a, the only thing is that as a human being, the desire of flesh, the desire of our flesh right. tend to push away the Holy Spirit. So if I read the passage here, don't mind one minute. Huh? 
So by all means, read it, read it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, Paul is saying, uh, so I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desire what is contrary to the spirit, and the Holy Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. So Paul is encouraging us that we should make room in our personal life, we should make room for the Holy Spirit to have a, a wonderful relationship with us and to guide us through and to be our comforter and be our guide. Mm -hmm. So this relationship is more on our part to make room for Holy Spirit to carry us through. Amen. Uh, that's Excellent. A that's a good contribution, Andrew. Thank you. It is true. If you walk with the Spirit, you will not fulfill the carnal desires of the flesh. You cannot have it both ways. That's why Paul said, you know, there is no contradiction. If you walk according to the Spirit, then the other is, is defeated. You cannot have both personality inside. All right. You cannot be one moment full of the Holy Spirit, next moment, you no, no. It, it, it's not like a, you know, sleep, uh, sp split personality, you know. You yeah. either... cannot have cold and hot water from the same spring. Correct, 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 correct. All right. Thank you again. Any any last one before I go to my last two PowerPoint? Any any question? So if I were you, I, I'll be assured, all right, where there are some people who are very concerned. You say, Pastor, uh, in fact, uh, I was the one that were told by my elders in the gospel hall, hey, Ellen, you be able to be careful, you know. You know, all this speaking in tongues, all this, uh, it can be of the devil and, uh, you know, you're not so sure, you know, all these things, you know, you're not so sure. But as a young Christian, let, let me let me say this. And even as a young Christian, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I know you're exposed to all these things. But my fruit tells me, I said, yeah, I, I just been baptized. I love God. I have, I was a stammerer. I stopped stammering. And, and, and now I, I feel was wow, I empowered bonus came in. So I said, how can the devil make me do all this? How can I have the devil? And so that convinced me, you know, uh, and, and obviously I left the church after that because uh, and then subsequently I, I, I received a vision and I went to Bible college. And so here is the point, you see, if you're concerned, if you're concerned about Oh, yo, I don't know whether you get it from the other source. Huh? Let me rest assured. Let me assure you. Lah, whoever claimed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is to judge the fruit of the Spirit in his life. If he claimed to do signs and wonders, all right, all right, signs and wonders. Again, I, I like to also show you, uh, being, being, being anointed, uh, being anointed doesn't mean you are immune to temptation. Being anointed doesn't mean you are you're super, you know. I, I will show you in next week. All right. I can show you Bible characters of those who are anointed and yet they fail. So sometimes the man of God and woman of God fail to understand. Just because you are anointed to do certain things doesn't mean you are immune to temptation. You are you are not immune to sickness or all, all this. I, I will show you from scripture. Anointing come from on high doesn't immune us, all right? In fact, Jesus was full with the Holy Spirit, and then he was led by the devil to be tempted. So my question is, if he is so full of the Holy Spirit, how can he be tempted? The devil led him into the wilderness to tempt him. You see? So how can, how can he be led by the Spirit and be tempted? It just goes to show, yeah, you, you can be full and led by the Spirit, if, if, if Jesus cannot be tempted, then what the devil tried to do on him? You see? So that's my point. And, and uh, okay, let, let me quickly share with you one more and then I will call it a night. Okay, is that all right? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? All right. Firstly, it's a free gift. All right. All right. Solemn responsibility. We read here, be filled with the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians, we read it, is a gift. It's a gift of God. There are certain attributes or attitudes, sorry, which open the ways to the blessing of God. We have to ask. 
Some people say, ah, I, 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 I really, uh, I really confess Jesus. Yeah, you, you, you ask him as a savior, as a redeemer. Yes, he saved you, but you didn't ask him. You didn't ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. In fact, Jesus said in Luke eleven, all right, uh, if you early father know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask. And so you you need to ask. You cannot say, ah, if, uh, if God wants to give me, he give me. Lah. Uh, I'm so sorry, it doesn't work that way. Lah. You, you need to ask. And then you need to thirst. Jesus said, if any man thirst, standing on that, that festive day, he said, if any man thirst, let him drink of me and out of his right, out of his heart, out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. John chapter 7. So we need to thirst, we need to ask, we need to have a desire, okay? And then we need to repent. Of course, this, this scripture is, uh, uh, is taken from the, the Pentecost uh, thing on the day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Obey, all right? We need to also obey, all right? In Acts chapter 5, if you read that in the context, it says, you, you will obey, then let's be baptized. You need to have faith, Okay? Some of us struggle with the baptism because we 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 you know, I, I don't know whether I'm good enough or not. I'm still new as a believer. You know, you have this mental block, you know. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know whether I have or not. So it is you have issues with faith. You cannot believe that you know if you ask God, God will give it to you. And so and then and then there are certain negative attitudes that oppose the work of the spirit as as uh you know, Andrew pointed out, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Holy Spirit can be lied to, can be resisted, can be grieved, can be quenched. We have already read that to you. So there are certain things that will open you up. So uh, that's why if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is at work already in your life. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit in a sense of the power of the Holy Spirit, then you need to have uh, some attitude adjustment, all right? You need to exercise more faith, okay? All right, all right. So so the question is, are the gifts of Holy Spirit described in the Bible still relevant? All right, is, is, all right I, I'll just show you quickly. Maybe I'll revisit this next week. All right, all the, the giftings are here, all right? Prophecy, serving, teaching, exaltation, giving, leading, showing mercy, all these, you need to understand, are gifts of the Holy Spirit. All right, we, we will revisit this next week, all right, because of time. I don't want to take too much time. And let me whet your appetite, all right? Uh, argument in favor of continuation of the miraculous gift. First Corinthians, if you sometimes, uh, uh, there are people who argue with you, ah, yeah, this, you know, Holy Spirit thing and the miracles and the gifts are normal. So they take it from this text, 1 Corinthians 13, when the perfect comes, where Paul said, you know, uh, 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 now I prophesy. But you see, they are not consistent when they use it. He said, when the perfect comes, has knowledge passed away? If you take that context, you've got to read that, 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 that text in, in its fullest form. You see? So they, they read here in the love chapter. Let me read to you, okay? Let me read to you. Okay, it says here, love will never fail. All right, we we know in part. Uh, let me let me read here. Uh, love will never fail. Verse eight. But prophecy, they will cease. Tongues, they will be still. Knowledge, they will pass away. Now let me ask you: Has knowledge passed away? Knowledge has increased, even in our time. Okay. All right, knowledge have increased in our time. And, and so you cannot take one and say, ah, you know, prophecy will cease. All right, in that same context, you're reading the scripture. You can't take one third and say, ah, knowledge, but knowledge can prevail. Knowledge can increase. Prophecy can cease. All right, but then Paul said, we know in part, we prophesy in part. And then he said, but when the perfection comes, the imperfect will disappear. When I was a child, I talked like a child. All right. I reason like a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish thing. So in verse 12, we say, now we see but a poor reflection of a mirror. 
but we see face to face. I know the in part, but I will know fully as I am fully grown. So many of the churches that believe in cessation of the gifts, believe in this scripture, you say, you know, with the way of the apostle, apostles and also with the incoming of the word of God, the Bible, all this, no more really. All right, all this, no more. But that is not an accurate exegesis of the scripture. All right, does this refer to the complete scripture or the life to come or neither? It's a good question you need to ask. All right. At that point of time, the scripture wasn't complete. Huh? By the way, the whole Bible is only compiled. The King James Version only came years, years later. So, but they say, oh, when we have a complete scripture, which complete scripture are you talking about? The New Testament scripture or the whole Bible as we have it now? All right. All right. You're going to ask yourself. So, in fact, there is no exegetical warrant for claiming that any of the gifts have ceased. In fact, it continued even to the days of the Apostle Paul. All right. Uh, 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 and so these are characteristics, endowment of Christian service in the New Testament, arguably the most fundamental way ministry occur. You read the gifts continue. All right. The main concern, however, let me quickly bring this to a close. Against a view maintained that the lack of more supernatural gifts throughout much of the church history. And, and, uh, and, and, and these things are limited to the apostolic age and three points must be noted. Hello, the gifts do not end at the close of the first century, but continue right to the third. Why I say that? It is a subsequent introduction of the church age when emperor all right, became the believer. It became a state unscriptural institution of the church and overreaction of the abuse of the gift. When the emperor became the Christian religion, in Christianity becomes the state religion, and this is where corruption takes place. The supernatural went out. Okay? No era of church history was complete without an example of all the gifts. All right? They, 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 argue, they argue that they say, we don't see all this. This is not true. This is not true. We still need the gifts. The 20th century resurgence of gifts cannot be attributed to the arrival of the last days. Since the New Testament, the last days reflect to the entire age. All right. And so they reflect a recovery of more biblical, spontaneous, or inclusive worship and ministry. In short, attempts to attribute all the current charismatic phenomena to the devil or merely human fabrication are misguided. They say, ah, you know, these are the last days. That's why we are seeing the, the worship tainted. We are seeing supernatural. I like to close here, right? Still, there is no guarantee any of this alleged manifestation of spirit is genuine and each must be tested. And, and this is what I want to show you, all right? All right, let, 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 me, let, me, uh, let me show you. Uh, I will revisit, okay, evaluating the miraculous gift, okay? The scripture teaches the gospel age progress, there will be increase in counterfeit manifestation from false Christ, false prophet. No, the scriptures are all there. Let me close you close this, this session with a few important things. How to evaluate whether the gifts or the prophet is genuine or not. Ask yourself this question and then we will close. Is Jesus attested as Lord? Now, very important. All right. Is the church edified? Do they lead to peace rather than to disorder, which happens in the Corinthian church? Do they possess a character of weakness to the unbeliever? All this, does it help the gospel in any way? Are they exercised in love? Do they lead to God being glorified? All these things we must ask ourselves, okay? All these things we must ask ourselves. Where any manifestation, any prophecy, any of these gifts, ask yourself, is God glorified? Is Jesus edified? Is the church being built up? Does it produce confusion or disorder? Do they have a character of godliness? Are they exercised in love? Or they are exercised in greed? They create more greed and pride and ego. Do they glorify God? And so if you can answer these six questions uh, okay, correctly, I think if they are all oh yes, then I think we are on safe ground. Then we are on safe ground. Then they cannot be counterfeit. 
because counterfeit gifts doesn't glorify God. Counter gift, counterfeit gifts do not edify and exalt the Lord. So you can ask yourself this question, if the church build up or it create a lot of confusion, greed. So I, I'll be the first to agree uh, agree with you that in these days, a lot of counterfeit prophets and gifts and you know all the charismatic. So judge it. The Bible keeps saying, test every prophecy. The Bible says, judge. And you who are spiritual, we need to judge according to the word of God. All right? Judge it. Does it glorify or is it a cultish practice? You got to judge. All right. I think I've spoken enough and uh, we'll continue this subject next week. Any other question in closing? All right, 9.45, really. Any other comments? Two more questions before I close. Anyone? Hello.